25 years ago, my brother Frank, my sister Marlo and I, and a bunch of friends and family created a film called The Second Coming. We never knew 25 years later that people would still be asking questions about the film itself, The Second Coming, and that very recently the film was inducted into the National Museum of African American History and Culture at the Smithsonian in D.C. So here we are 25 years later. And what I found was when we shot the film back in the day, there were many questions about the image of Christ and the notion of the image of Christ. So we wanted to kind of really just explore that. And that's what our film did. So our film poses the question, what did Jesus look like? And does it matter what he even looked like? So, you know, at the time when we shot this film 25 years ago, I wanted to very much start a conversation. And, and we did. We took it all the way to the Phil Donahue show. And, some of you may not remember the Phil Donahue show. It was the number one talk show on television before Oprah Winfrey. And we did an entire show about this movie, The Second Coming, and the notion of Jesus being a man of color. All right, question for our audience. What color was Jesus? That's right. Here's who's here. Blair Underwood joins us. And it was fascinating because at one point people would say, well, that doesn't make sense. And others said, it does make sense. He was a man that grew up in the desert. It was a Middle Eastern man. How did, he be, how, did he, how did he come to have blonde hair and blue eyes? And how those images changed? And then, then the conversation morphed to, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. Every culture creates Jesus or God in their own image. I, I, I tend to challenge that notion because my question is, if imagery doesn't matter, if the power of the image doesn't matter, and why were those images changed in the first place from a Middle Eastern man to one with blonde hair and blue eyes? So here we are right now in Florence, Italy. We're at the famous Duomo Cathedral. Uh, and we're in a city filled with history of iconic uh, pieces of art and artifacts by our greatest artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and many others. And many of those images were changed in this city on this continent. At the end of the day, what this film is about and what I wanted to say as a filmmaker and as an artist was that it doesn't matter what anyone looks like. It doesn't matter even what Jesus even looks like. What matters mostly is what does his heart look like? What does the heart of man look like who we're dealing with? That's the ultimate message. The ultimate message is this, the, the themes of love, tolerance, understanding, humanity, empathy. But ultimately, what Jesus stood for and what this film is about is love. I hope you enjoy the 25th anniversary commemorative edition of The Second Coming. It is written that in the last days, the Christ will return like a thief in the night, taking his true believers to his Father on high. This one event is known to Christians as the rapture, thus fulfilling the prophetic second coming. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Was God. And the Word became flesh. And in that flesh was the light.
for they know not what they do. They called him the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, and yet he was denied by his own people and condemned to die on the cross under the governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate. Let her pass. She's his mother. On that day, this Jesus of Nazareth endured 18 hours of trial between the Jewish and Roman councils. He was whipped 40 times, stripped naked, mocked, and shamefully adorned with a crown of thorns by the Roman soldiers.
crazy son of a bitch, okay? Let me ask you something. Do you really think you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God? Well, God better bring himself down here and save your ass because you're in my house now. And we don't take too kindly to rapists around here. You see, the judge and the people of this city don't much appreciate a stranger. That looks like you. Who comes waltzing into town, having his way, or having sexual intercourse with a 10-year-old white girl. I have a problem with that. And the family of this little girl has a big problem with you walking away with anything short of a death penalty. And since we can't treat ourselves to that, we're going to have ourselves a little fun watching you score. All right, take him to level 13. Excuse me. Sir, um, it is obvious that this man is not crazy. If we take him down there, he'll, he'll lose his mind. They'll drive him insane, sir. Who's this? Huh? What's your name? My name's Joey. Arimathea, Texas. This is second day here, sir. Well, Joey from Arimathea, Texas, you are to be seen and not heard. Don't let me have to tell you that again, all right? All right, let's go. Orderly, let me see this man's chart. What's his classification? Sir, he, he is a multiple personality. You've been having problems with this man. Sir, you yourself prescribed this medication, and nothing until this has calmed him down. I change his medication to amitriptyline. That's an antidepressant. Won't that exacerbate his condition? What? Uh, nothing, sir. Do it, orderly. Increasing the dosage 50, no, 75 milligrams daily. Do you understand? 75 milligrams daily. And do exactly the same for this man. And throw these two degenerates into the same cell. Give him the chamber. Welcome to level 13. Mommy, he, he 
he's just like he said he would be. Mommy, he's got beautiful long hair, and he's got hair on his face, just like Santa Claus. And his skin, Mommy, is so dark and beautiful. Hello. Hello. I'm Emily. Jesus. <laughs> I know. Can you come over and play in my backyard? Well, Emily, don't... Don't you think you should ask your mother first? Oh, no, I know she won't mind, because one day I brought home Billy Turd, and he's this inkiest boy in school, and except when him all over my mommy's toilet, she said he was okay. Billy. Turd. We call him that because he always drops turds in his pants. <laughs> you know the turd sound? Can you make the turd sound? Can you do that?
is irrelevant whether my skin color is light or dark. I am black because black ancestral blood flows through my veins. If the roots of the tree are black, then the fruit must be black. Painted the master with blonde hair and blue eyes, just as you know him to be. But it is written, Daniel 7, verse 9, his hair was like the pure wool. For it is written, Andre, Revelations 1, verse 15, by my apostle John, who knew me and walked with me for three years of his life, it is written, his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. You must understand, my friend, that my father created me from all people, for all people. But you see, I am what I am. to make my little girl real happy, man. I used to watch you guys talking and laughing and her face, man, would just light up. I mean, hell, you, you healed her. You made her walk. Well, she, she got for me with crippled legs and a wheelchair. But you changed that. that I don't blame you, man. It's just that, uh, you know, I'm her daddy. And I thought you was, uh, just taking something away from me. She's, uh... I don't know... I don't know what's wrong with her. She's been laying in the hospital for weeks. She's getting worse. The doctors don't know nothing. Specialists, they don't know what to say. Every time she tries to walk, she just falls flat on her face. She doesn't... She doesn't have any energy left. You know? Just look at her. I'm afraid she's dying, man. And I don't want to lose her. She's all I got. I saw what you did for her before. Please, help her. Why bring it to me? Because I was, I was afraid. And I am tired of waiting for doctors to come up with the answers. You were all she asked.
can be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. and true believers to his throne on high. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.